The trailer for Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, has made its rounds. Let's take a deep dive into the trailer and see what we can extract in terms of information, questions, and even Easter eggs. Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Gaia here, and today has been quite the busy day, hasn't it? We got a trailer for the brand new Crash game, along with some brand new gameplay to boot. But we are not done yet. Later today, we have an interview with the developers of the game, Toys for Bob. And tomorrow, a gameplay breakdown of all the gameplay that we see today. But for now, let's put our attention back to the launch trailer. This trailer was absolutely pure hype. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend that you do because, well, this is the breakdown of that said trailer. So go watch it if you haven't. I have it on my channel along with 15 new screenshots. So let's start from the top. We're going to be talking about the information that seems the most factual. First up, we got what seems to be what looks like a revamped and more dangerous Cortex Castle. We can see moving gears with platforms that seems to be full of, well, danger and death. We can also see here a brand new enemy, and it seems to be a bat-like creature with what seems to look like a form of a helmet with four lights on it. We can also see lava as well, because... You know, an evil villain castle isn't ever complete unless it literally has a bolt of liquid magma. When Crash begins to slide through the different shattered dimensions, there is a bunch of different level concepts. We first see a wrecked ship that looks similar to the ship from Crash Cove in CTR. Now we know there is some pirate themes in terms of levels, so it would be a nice little subtle nod to the Bandicoot's racing spinoff. The next theme that we see seems to be a post-apocalyptic themed Mad Max style level. We can see this by the old destroyed and rusted metal, with the giant skull that Crash slides through, kind of similar to the aesthetic from Mega Mix Mania in CTR. Then we slide through a jungle that we, well, naturally are going to assume, though we might be wrong, to be the Wumpa Islands. There's that spooky mountain that we saw at the beginning there too. The final level that we see through the shattered glass dimensions seems to be a frozen wasteland with some sort of a fishing village. Now, as Crash is grinding through these levels in the trailer, we can see he's collecting what seems to be grapes or at least some kind of a purple fruit or berry. Now, this is interesting because A, this is not Wampa Fruit, and B, in the Crash mobile game that recently was released for public testing, we can see Crash grabs a very similar purple fruit and uses them to to throw at bosses and boxes. Maybe a mechanic that will be used in this game as well? To hit enemies from afar or to help solve puzzles? Just something interesting that I saw. While Crash is running through the jungle here, we can see that he passes a pair of surfboards. Now what's interesting here is that this surfboard has a paw print on it. Why that's interesting is because inside the house in Crash Mine Over Mutant, we can see that Crash has a pair of boards with paw prints on them as well. To help fuel this in Crash the Titans and Mine Over Mutant, Crash has pad imprints on the bottom of his shoes, which is obviously something that inspired Toys for Bob, because Crash now also has this on the bottom of his shoes, so the references connect fairly easily here. While Crash is rail grinding, right below him are these stones that have these skulls on them. The reason why this is interesting is because in the leaked merch, which yes, I knew about it, the same kind of platform can be seen as Crash is taking a selfie on this little statue. We can also see that Crash is grinding through what seems to be a native fortress, and here we can see one of them screaming at Crash as he slides through their little sanctuary. At the bottom of the vine grind, we can get a quick glimpse at a new crate that has a golden wampa on it. But what does it do, and what exactly is a golden wampa? We don't exactly know in this game. But in CTR, Golden Wumpas were introduced as a way to get bonus Wumpa coins, so maybe they give something special in terms of collectibles. Who knows? Crash's jet board is back from Crash 2, and I must say, it looks like it moves so much faster compared to the jet board in the second game. The fire blaring out of its pipes definitely helps with that effect. But as Crash is boarding through the rapids, we can see that there's a new nitro crate design as well. Given a more simplistic design, and now just has a giant yellow N on it, which I think most of us can understandably avoid as well as fear. We also get our first look at a brand new mask. 
whose name is Ika Ika. Now, how do we know this? Like I said, I did an interview with Toys for Bob. Be sure to check it out later on today. But this is the Gravity Mask. The mask allows you to change the flow of gravity at your whim. So you can choose to either run on the floor, like a filthy casual, or run on the roof, granting and giving new platforming concepts. What is also really cool about Ika Ika is that his design is actually an up and down arrow, showing which direction of gravity is being shifted to. But not only is it two arrows, but two faces. You can see the one with its eyes open now, but if you look down here, there's a set of eyes that are closed. Depending on whether you have the gravity on a normal flow for crash or decide to flip it, the other side of the mask comes to life while the opposite side closes its eyes. Next up we have what I think her name is Kapuluna. I might be wrong and still awaiting confirmation on her name, but she is what we call the Time Mask. Now you can see she has the moon cycles on her head, along with hourglass earrings. She has the ability to slow time to a crawl, allowing Crash to be able to get past obstacles that would normally be absolutely impossible. In this wide shot here, we can see this giant futuristic metropolis that's currently under construction. I got a feeling that this is where a lot of the platforming themes will come for this level. The next screenshot we have is what seems to be a Japanese themed temple that looks straight out of a dream sequence. The aesthetics here are just gorgeous. And of course, we got dragons! And as you know, I love them dragons. Here we have an alleyway of... Uh, uh, let me see here. Headless ghost clowns on unicycles juggling heads. Yup, that's a sentence. The theming in this level looks a lot like the theming of Carnival, and it just looks amazing. But the bizarre and amazing level theming doesn't stop there. We have what seems to be some floating turtles in a coral above ground giant magical forest? Like these ideas are bizarre, but they're original and might I say, amazing. Oh yeah, then we have a dinosaur. It, it's, it's, it's a dinosaur. What else do you need? It's, it's amazing. The trailer also seemingly reveals that we can play as Cortex. Now there's a few details here, but it seems that he can turn things into platforms with his gun. I have more details about this in the interview, but we can see whoever he changes is actually still alive. Take a look at the platform he is standing on. It has eyes and is still very much alive and kind of miserable. In this shot here, we can see two hollow signs in the futuristic metropolis. One has Aku Aku's face on it with the words Aku, but the other is actually a hollow sign for what seems to be a Crash Team Racing cart repair shop, which is a really interesting and cool little nod towards the racing spin-offs. Later in the level, we can also see one of the enemies is literally just a giant robotic garbage can. Y yeah, he he's a garbage can. He he's trying his best, guys. Next up, we got Engine's giant Guitar Hero Deathbot. You can see Engine's band name is Rockethead. And wouldn't you know, in the head of the giant Deathbot is a glass bubble shield, housing Engine and his drum set. I did point this out in my previous video, but I might as well mention this quickly now. But the stereos release these circles that look a lot like Guitar Hero frets traveling down a what seems to be a guitar neck. We can also see fans in the crowd throwing up various hand signs. One of Crash's new movesets is that now he can wall run, which is a really cool little technique that's going to make the player feel like a platforming boss. The last few things I noticed was back at the pirate level when Crash switches from rail grinding to, well, I suppose hand ziplining, we can see cute little octopus pirates with little swords and hats. But also, there seems to be some possums? Maybe rats? Causing shenanigans with their little pirate outfits and swords. And also, I mentioned this in my last video, but there's a little joke right at the end that even though this is the 8th game in the mainline Crash series, Coco only responds with a number 3 for how many times that they beat Cortex. The mask feels like it's been more because, well, there's been more games. How many times have you beaten this clown anyway? Three. Really? Only three? <laughs> Funny. Seemed like more. And that's it for my deep analysis for the trailer. I know it was only a minute and a half, but there was a lot of stuff to talk about. Make sure to subscribe for more Crash Bandicoot 4 content. 
A huge thank you to all those who support the channel through Patreon and being a sponsor on the channel. If you'd like to help it out, check out the links in the description below where you can buy some CGE merch or become a Patreon. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more gaming and nostalgic content. Thank you so much everyone and I'll see you guys in the next video.